Good morning, dear friends. I invite you to join me in celebrating Mass of Tuesday, the 13th week of Easter, 13th week in ordinary time. In this Mass, I offer prayers for you and your families and ask God to watch over, ask God to protect, ask God to provide, ask God to keep you safe through all of the dangers of life. I'd also like to pray for those who have birthdays today. Pray for my younger brother, Dominic, who celebrates his birthday today. Pray and ask God to grant him many more years. Pray too for others who have anniversaries of other kinds. May God bless those anniversaries and grant many more years to celebrate. I pray for a family that is asked my prayers for their marriage. Pray and ask that God may keep them together, that God may help them resolve their differences and walk through their problems. I pray for anyone who may be in danger at this time, that the Lord Jesus may step in to support and to help. And finally, I'd like to offer Mass for our soldiers, men and women who wear our nation's uniform, especially those in harm's way. Pray for God to watch over and to keep them safe. Let us now go to God and ask his blessings. Our opening prayer will be, Holy God, we praise your name. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter fling. All in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, to offer this Mass and to offer your intentions also this morning to God, let us first acknowledge our unworthiness, our sinfulness, and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, may he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption, Chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Amos. Hear this, hear this word, or children of Israel, that the Lord pronounces over you, over the whole family that I brought up from the land of Egypt. You alone have I favored more than all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your crimes. Do two walk together unless they have agreed? Does a lion roar in the forest when it has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from its den unless it has seized something? Is a bird brought to earth by a snare when there is no lure for it? Does a snare spring up from the ground without catching anything? If the trumpet sounds in a city 
will a people not be frightened? If evil befalls a city, has not the Lord caused it? Indeed, the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The lion roars, who will not be afraid? The Lord God speaks, who will not prophesy? I brought upon you such of evil as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You were like a brand plucked from the fire. Yet you returned not to me, says the Lord. So now I will deal with you in my own way, O Israel. And since I will deal thus with you, Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, lead me in your justice, O Lord. Lead me in your justice, O Lord. At dawn, I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lead me in your justice, O Lord. You hate all evil doers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful the Lord abhors. Lead me in your justice, Lord. But I, because of your abundant mercies, will enter your house and worship at your holy temple in the fear of you, O Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves. But he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the wind and the seas, and there was great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this? whom even the winds and the sea obey. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will reflect quickly with you this morning from the first reading, but my emphasis will be on the Gospel reading. Scripture tells us in the first reading that God does nothing. He said, Indeed, the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The Lord God does nothing without revealing his plans 
to the prophet. And that means nothing happens. This is God's enterprise. The wall is God's enterprise. It is his project. He is the managing director, the CEO. He is, he is everything. He's the owner of this business. And that means he understood how he wanted the world to look like. And from time to time he does, whether daily reviews or hourly reviews or weekly reviews or monthly reviews, yearly, annually, annual reviews to see how those he has entrusted this business are doing. And from time to time, he intervenes to get things right, to put things right when those entrusted with the business are, are beginning to veer off his original plan. He did have a plan. He has a plan. He still has a plan. And we are brought in to be masked to be executors of that plan, of God's plan. The God will intervene from time to time. He has put all of those mechanisms, you know, the switch would flip here. When someone has crossed the line, things happen. All of those have been put in place. And I believe, I believe that this moment was put in place. Not that God sat down there and then placed a curse on us. No, all of this is put in place. This switch has been flipped at this time. This coronavirus is a, a, a switch that is flipped at this time to get our attention, get our attention that we are fearing off the plan that God, the owner of this enterprise, the owner of this project has in his mind. That we are trying to crush the walls and the boundaries and he is getting our attention and i don't say this lightly i believe this to be true because scripture tells me clearly what god's plan was you read from any 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 part of scripture god intended this world to reflect the love between the father the son and the holy spirit the dependence of these three together, the interrelatedness of these three together. And that's why God chose to create us not like trees, not like other animals, but like animals with intellect, animals with a capacity for love, not just pleasure, the capacity for love. And so, I will say this. God is not going to get us over this bridge until we surrender to the correction He is trying to get us, to get us to, to, to adopt or to adopt. Many weeks ago, or many months ago, about three or, more, three or so months ago, I said, I believe, that this virus is been allowed by the Almighty God. God doesn't put this on us. He allowed it on us to do two things. To recalibrate our relationship with God because it is broken. God did not break it. You and I broke it. It is scarred. God did not scar it. We scarred it. God allowed us to go through this, to flail and recognize that we still need Him, that we cannot fix the world's problems on our own. We still need Him. And it doesn't look like we're getting that lesson yet. And that's the first one. The second is that we need each other that we need each other. And it still doesn't look like we are getting that one yet. That we need each other. First, we need God. 
Second, we need each other. And third, we need our environment. We need other creatures. We are not the only one created on this earth. While we take care of ourselves, we must also learn to take care of all the other things God created because he made us stewards of creation. And until we are able to have the appropriate relationship at these three dimensions, first with the divine, then with other humans, and then with the rest of creation, we will not be able to find the peace that God intended for this enterprise. It is, it is sad that at this time, especially when so many people are dying in the world, that we're still refusing that your life depends on what I do, that my life depends on what you do. That how you choose to act will ultimately determine how safe I am. And God is waiting for us to get that lesson. God is also waiting for us to get the lesson that we depend on Him. That we also depend on the rest of creation for the stability of us here on earth. See what happens in the Gospel reading. Jesus got into the boat, Scripture says, and the disciples followed suddenly, suddenly, as, as if from nowhere. You know, it wasn't sudden. God knew all the while. Jesus didn't fall asleep because he didn't know this was going to happen. He knew. God knew all the while. God has this plan to check and see the faith of the apostles. And that's why the first thing he called them out on was their lack of faith. He said, why are you terrified, O oh, you of little faith? So here, he allowed them, allowed all of this to see their dependence on God, their faith in God. And he realized there was none. And that's why he called them first on them. And I think at this time, God is calling us out, calling you, calling me out at these three levels that something is gone far and wrong in our relationship with God first, then with each other and then with creation. And we need to begin to do something right now. Otherwise, this circumstance, this situation is going to be prolonged beyond anything anyone could imagine. It is unacceptable that our country, the greatest country in the world, is so helpless at this time, unable to fix a virus. It is unacceptable this is a country that has fixed all problems before now. And we can do it. We must do it only when we choose to recognize this three level of dependence. Dependence on God. I say it again. Dependence on you and on me, each other. And dependence on the rest of creation. And so we pray, dear friends, let us pray. That God may open our eyes to recognize that it's impossible to be selfish and expect to be happy. It's impossible to be selfish and expect to be content. It's impossible to be selfish and expect God to hear you. It doesn't happen. And I hate to charge those who choose not to protect me and protect everyone else with this. But that's what our behavior speaks when we, cho we choose to not do the simple things like wearing a mask. Only because you're young and healthy and vibrant. God bless you. But I hope you stay young and healthy and vibrant forever. I don't know anyone who did. 20, 30, 40 years down the line, you will be as weak and frail and as dependent as all the seniors right now. That's how life is. And I hope we recognize all of that and begin to do right, especially for the very vulnerable, those who are not as blessed and as fortunate and as healthy and as vibrant and as resilient as the rest. 
we don't live just so that they die. We live so that they live too. So I, I hope that we are able to get these lessons right. May God help us. May God open our eyes. May God let us see that the world would never move until we choose to do right and move it around for everyone. So I would like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are still the delight of the Almighty God. Yes, he has allowed us to go through all of this, but it's out of love to get us do right and enjoy the best of life here. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. God is our stronghold and our refuge. Let us pray to this loving Father, for all of our needs. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may continue to guide the church with eloquence and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of the world, that all leaders of nations, leaders of local and state governments, may recognize the call of God to right human society by establishing policies that show respect for God, respect for others, and respect for creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians, that, that Christians elected to represent us may be strong in the courage of Christ who was rejected by his own people that continue to do right. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may not rely on earthly things but place our hope in God who never fails us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those formed in the womb may be protected and be born into security and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, especially those in critical care, for seniors who are vulnerable, for young people with physical or other comorbidities, for doctors and nurses who risk their lives every day, for unemployed or those who have lost their jobs at this time, those whose businesses are in dire straits at this time, for all those who protect our society, the police, the fire department, and all other emergency responders, for our men and women of the military, that you, O oh God, may protect all of these persons, and that you may help meet every one of their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who celebrate birthdays today, especially Dominic, who has his birthday, and all those who have anniversaries, that God may bless them and give them many more beautiful and excellent years ahead to celebrate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For graduates of this year 2020 who are being born into a world, academically born into a world that is no longer hospitable enough because opportunities are drying up, that God may provide them guidance that God may keep, them, may keep their hopes alive and help them press forward to a future that is still there for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray for us and with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in us now and the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, hear the prayers of your people 
as we gather here on this altar to offer this Eucharist to you. Make, our, make us one in faith, in hope, and in love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are God, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of His holy church. Amen. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant me, pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things. Whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to the co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and thee, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to you, and to all of your families, may God's peace rest and abide forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. In this moment of spiritual communion, for those who are still unable to receive the body and blood of Christ, let us pray. Most compassionate, most merciful, most caring God. You know how to meet the needs of your children because you anticipate all of those needs. Right now, you know, dear God, the spiritual graces your children need at this moment of distance and separation. We beg Almighty God that you may bring your blessings upon them, that you may minister spiritually minister this sacrament unto their souls and spirits for the enrichment of their lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life on board so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruits that last forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, 
cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us and for those who may join us at another time. Pray always that God may watch over you, that God may bless you. Please pray. Pray for, pray for the world and pray for each other. That we may learn these three lessons, how to relate to our God, how to relate to one another, and how to relate to creation, the rest of creation. Our stability on earth depends on our ability to manage these three levels of existence. So is you are the delight of God and God still reposes trust in you and in me. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll sing a song to our Blessed Mother. Hail, holy queen and true oh, Maria. Hail, mother of mercy and of love, oh, Maria. Triumphal cherubim, sing. Seraphim, heaven on earth resounded in salve, 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 Regina. Our lives are sweetness here below. Triumphal ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heaven on earth resound a hymn, song.